Hi, I'm Landon. We're putting together a Telecaster from start to finish. Let's go. Hey, how's it going? I'm Landon. Thanks for checking out my channel. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and just take a moment to click a like if you do like this video. All right, so we're build assembling. Build assembling, whatever word you want to use. Building, assembling, creating, putting together, making an Ikea kit, Lego designing, a parts caster, Fender Telecaster. And this is going to be from start to finish. No cutting out the important stuff. So this will be a massive video. It's going to be broken up into sections. Take a look in the description for the timestamps. It'll all be broken down. So the idea with this video, I'm building a guitar and hopefully you can use this as a reference. Along with my previous video, the blue Telecaster that I put together. If you haven't seen that one already, take a look in the cards. I'll link that. So. This is a candy apple red with a roasted maple neck and uh, I'd describe it as like a, a mix of vintage and modern style just because the parts I'm using are quite the mix. If you have any feedback, leave comments below. I take all feedback, good and bad, and uh, try to learn and make my uh, future videos even better. All right, before we get going, points to mention, I'm not a professional luthier. I'm a guy that's watched other videos and uh, learned over time how to put this stuff together. It's not rocket Scientology. So yeah, like I said, I'm not a luthier. You might not agree with the way I put this stuff together, but the point of this is that it works for me and it ends up working. Just want to comment on a couple things, a couple comments that from the previous video to make this video even better. A couple of people said, isn't this just like uh, you're taking a made in Mexico guitar and just upgrading the pickups? And my response to that is no, because I've picked everything. I've handpicked everything from top to bottom. So. It's not just taking a player series made in Mexico guitar, which would be similar, right? That's the parts, they're very similar to that. Uh, so no, um, this one I will focus more on the tools that I'm using, so I'll show that. In the previous video, a lot of people asked me about the tools, so I'll show them in more detail. Uh, if you did see my blue assembly video, this one's gonna have a lot more steps because part of that one was already pre-assembled. A lot more to do in this one. Now, you can just skip ahead and just use the timestamps, but I'm also gonna talk about each section right now just briefly and then we'll get into the video. Okay, we'll start off by going over all the parts, all of it. We'll go through each part and we're gonna show the model number, I'll talk about where I got them from, I'll give links to where you can get them and I'll even show a price breakdown at the end of how much everything costs and how much this whole project was for me to do. Uh, after taking a look at the parts, we're gonna go check out Fender's Mod Shop website and make like a mock-up of, of a guitar. If you're gonna buy it from Fender, and uh, try to get the similar parts and you can see uh, just for fun you can see what the price would be for something like that uh, that I mentioned we're gonna go over the tools just quickly I'll just show you what I'm using and then I'll talk about them more as they come up in the video Then we will finally get to the assembly of the guitar and it's a step-by-step -step going through everything so it's a long section there'll be a breakdown of every single piece and uh, how I put them together after the assembly will be the setup and that includes a number of different sections as well take a look at that that's a, a big challenge for a lot of people. It's tough for me as well. It's kind of like a, a, I do an initial setup and then I kind of do a work in progress after the video. Once everything's set up and ready to go, we'll take a look at the finished guitar in the gallery. We take a look at some beautiful close-up photos and videos. And then finally, I'm sure the part that a lot of people just want to skip to, the sounds. We're going to play it through a Vox AC15 and we'll do some clean tones, we'll do some dirty tones, and we'll do the regular kind of sound demos that I do on this channel. So. Check it out, we'll get to hear it. All right, this is a long video, get ready for it. Grab a bag of popcorn, a bag of chips, a bag of apples, whatever you like. Ah, bad joke, candy apple. It's on my mind, right? I just wanna eat that guitar. Stop saying that. All right, let's get things going here with all the parts. So I'm gonna show all the parts that I'm gonna use in the video and in the assembly of the guitar. And then uh, I'll give the, uh, the model number and you'll see the price at the end as well. So you can see exactly what I paid. So here's a neck plate, it's an American standard. It's got the uh, micro tilt uh, hole in there. Why did I get that? Because it was the best deal. Sometimes money talks, right? Um, you can see that was made in the USA. I find that interesting. You'll see a lot of parts are made in the USA. This one is Ferrules and uh, they're also made in the USA. American series Tele. And moving on, got the control knobs here. These can be used on a telly. They can also be used on a bass guitar. You'll see that telly and P bass, chrome knobs. All right, taking a look, these are standard tuning machines from Fender. Already had these from another guitar, so these didn't cost me anything for this project. So 
let's look here I've got the control plate for the telecaster and it comes with two screws and the plate and we can see here well, you can see the little screws there this one is uh, made in South Korea so they vary most of the uh, most of the parts here you're gonna see are made in the USA but some some differ so this is from a player series telecaster I've already gone ahead and done the uh, the shielding on the back with copper tape I'm just showing a little sample there and basically that's to uh, help with uh, reduced noise and uh, talk more about that later when I show the shielding on the on the cavities so taking a look here these are a pack of screws for the, the pick guard where are these made these are made in Taiwan somewhere else it's all over the place all over the world we're going around the world for this guitar here is a vintage style bridge with uh, brass saddles you can see that's made in the USA and I ended up buying compensated saddles and putting those on instead and you can see those are made in the USA and I'll talk about more about that later got this little bag of some spare parts here this is a cup that I already had from another guitar this is a, a body grounding wire just trying to show it close up and this is a barrel style switch tip had a pack of two along with um, the string guide I had a pack of two so I've got one left over from each so let's move on to the neck probably the most important part of the guitar and this is uh, Fender Roasted Maple, 22 jumbo frets. And we're just doing some close-ups here so you can see how beautiful it is. It's a glossy fretboard. It's a satiny back. And it's awesome. I love it. Uh, it's an oval shape, so it's a bit wider, 12-inch radius. And uh, that should help with bending, apparently. I've never actually used a 12-inch radius uh, neck before, so that's really going to be interesting to see. And I'm looking forward to that. So there's the part number, oval 22 jumbo 12 inch. Okay, moving on to the part that I want to eat. I don't know why I say that. Candy apple body made in Mexico, 60s classic series. And it's routed for single coil, single coil. You can see the nice job they did there. There's the weight, 2.422 kilograms. What's that in pounds? You figure it out. And we're going to be putting some V-Mod Telecaster pickups inside. These are the Telecaster pickups that you would find in the Professional Series today. So on the back here shows the output meter. It's kind of like a, a middle of the ground, three out of five rating, and they're made in the USA. All right, let's move on now to the one part on the guitar that isn't made by Fender. This is a solderless wiring kit from Obsidian Wire. It's a four-way kit, so we're gonna have a four-way switch on it, which is pretty cool. I've used them in, I can't remember the exact number, probably four or five different guitars and I love them. These are my go-to. They probably cost a little bit more than if you did the uh, soldering yourself and bought the parts and put it all together, but it's just one thing that it's, it just works really well and they're really well made and I really like them. So you can see what you actually get with this one. Just popping it open here. You've got the, uh, the output cable. It's got all the hardware included, a little extra cable if you need it. And uh, yeah, the quality's awesome. No complaints, no problems with it. Check the description, you'll see them. Here's more of the hardware. So, and a couple more things here to move on to. Saving the best for last, right? Strap buttons. You can't you can't uh, play guitar standing up without strap buttons. So, these are made in the USA, original strap buttons. And there we go. That is everything. That is all the parts that I'm using in this guitar. This picture is just beautiful. Just look at them laying out. All right, so I'm including this here. You can pause it if you want to take a look at the details. The most common question I had in my last video of my uh, blue Telecaster that I assembled, how much did everything cost? And I'm showing it all here. Here's how much it cost for me. Everything's listed in Canadian here, and you can see the final price in US at the bottom as well. And uh, just keep in mind that prices fluctuate a lot. Always try to find deals, look for deals. Uh, you can see a couple of things here. I mentioned before the standard series, guitar tuning machines, didn't cost me anything because I already had them. Um, a couple other things as well. Notice the uh, the candy apple red body. You'll see it listed there twice. The first one I bought from Amazon and it went missing. And that's the first time I've ever had anything get lost from Amazon. So had to reorder that on eBay. And uh, you can see the Obsidian Wire Tele Kit. Uh, that didn't cost me anything as well. I'm actually reusing it from another guitar and uh, doing another wiring kit and that, but that's something separate. So you can see the total price at the bottom there, $1,366 Canadian or $953 US, give or take, because prices fluctuate. 
I hope everything's clear here. If you have any questions, let me know. I want to be uh, straightforward and make everything as simple as possible. And just remember, try to shop around and try to find the best deals. That's my advice. Okay, let's move on. All right, so here, I did this in the last video as well. We're gonna take a look at the Fender Mod Shop and build a similar guitar. And uh, I say similar because you can't get all the same parts necessarily uh, without using the Fender Mod Shop. So what we're gonna do is build the guitar to very, very similar specs and then see what the price is that you'd get if you were using the Fender Mod Shop. And this is just a fun comparison. It's obviously not gonna be uh, perfectly exact to what I'm getting. So I've already picked the body. You can choose Alder. Uh, I've got a Candy Apple Red. All right, just looking at all the different options for pick guards here. You got the one ply white, three ply parchment, which is what I'm doing in this video. So we'll take that one and then move on. And then picking the pickups, I can pick the ones that I've got, the V-Mod pickups. And just taking a look at the specs here, high output. So that should be cool. Taking a look at the tuners. Uh, they've got the standard ones. They've got the locking tuners by default. They've also got classic gear tuners, which are not vintage tuners. They're more classic looking and they fit, I think, on the modern style. So I was just taking a look here and uh, they have a better gear ratio. But we're using the classic, we're using the standard ones because I already have some. So we're gonna go ahead with that. And then here's pretty much what it's gonna look like. Bridge is a compensated saddle. Uh, I am able to get one similar to that. Uh, I learned when I was buying the parts, there is a difference for the American model versus the vintage. It's where the holes are for the strings. All right, pick the strings. Obviously, I won't be getting a case, so you could subtract that, that value from the guitar. In Canada, the case would be like 200 bucks. In the States, probably somewhere between 100 to 150. And then having a close look here at the guitar. And the neck close up, just some nice close ups. Pretty cool that you can do this if you want to actually do this. Um, project on their site and buy it from them. So I'm just adding it to the cart. For some reason, the cart doesn't update. And uh, last time I tried doing one of these, I added like 20 to the cart. So take a look at the price here, 1749 US. And uh, so converting that to Canadian, so using today's currency conversion, $2,431.09 in Canadian. And that doesn't include duty and shipping to Canada, if there is any. So. Cool little comparison, now you know how much a similar guitar would be from the Fender Mod Shop. All right, quick flyby here of some of the tools I'll be using, pretty much all of them. And uh, as I use them in the video, I'll explain what they are a little bit more, but just wanted to show them quickly here. And I've got the neck sitting there. I don't remember why the neck is sitting there, but anyways, these are the tools that are gonna help me make, build, assemble this guitar. All right, here we go. Here's the assembly. This is the biggest part of the video. And uh, we're gonna start things off with the neck, attaching the neck to the body. Some people like doing the tuners onto the neck first, but the way I see it is you wanna have less weight and less pull from the, uh, the neck and the body. So put the neck on first, I say do that. And uh, let me know if what you think about that. So what we're gonna do is Basically the neck plate is this metal piece and there's four bolts that come with it or screws. And I like to take paraffin wax. It's pretty much like candle wax. And uh, I just scrape it through the, uh, the ridges here. So when you're putting the screw into the wood, it um, kind of glides in and helps uh, so you don't break the wood or anything. So you can see here the, the neck should just slide in and fit easily. It looks like there's a little bit of give um, a little bit of extra space, and I did notice that, but that's uh, it's okay, it worked out okay. So I'm gonna flip it over gently here, take the neck plate, and again, you'll notice the neck plate, it has the little hole, the fifth hole in it, which is for the micro tilt adjustment, and the only reason I got that was because it was a better deal, and I mentioned that before. It's a better deal for that neck plate, and uh, so here we go. I kind of just stick them in one at a time, and I'm all about doing the hand tools. Like, I don't like power tools at all on any of this stuff, except for drilling new holes. Where you need to actually use a power tool, I'll use one, but I recommend using your hands because I just don't want to risk the chance of um, putting too much force and breaking something. So you can see my super fast uh, job here. I'm probably fast forwarding about 8,000%. Uh, so get those in there just uh, some final adjustments here. 
Again, I kind of go, I ease into each one. I don't screw one in all the way and then do the other ones. And I don't know if that's the right way or not, but it's worked for me. So like I said, this stuff works for me, right? I've done, this will be my fifth build, I believe. And uh, along the way, I've learned a lot of things. Um, I've had a couple of mistakes in the past two that I built. Nothing detrimental, but you know, I kept them in the videos because I wanted to show them. And uh, it's, it's a learning experience, right? You do this, so just the final Titan here. Um, and I will mention the mistakes that I made quickly. The, uh, the white, I did a white Telecaster and I drilled through the back of the body because the cavity, the control cavity is really, really thin. So I'll show you that later when, when uh, I'm doing that part. Here's a close up here, of the neck and it's attached and we're, we're good to go. Basically this is, uh, you know, your guitar is kind of made and now you're just adding all the extra parts, which, which you need. But here's the tuners and these tuners from memory, if I can remember exactly where I got them, they'd be from my black Telecaster. Here's a close up here. It's got two little notches and they just sit in. Uh, it's black Telecaster made in Mexico that I got back in 2003 or 2004. So this is really easy. Tuners are probably the, one of the easiest things you can do. You've got the tuning machine and then I'm just using a socket piece here to tighten it. So you've got the, uh, the tuning machine, it's one piece, and then you've got these things called bushings, and they're basically like screws that fit in the holes, and then you tighten them there. So just pop it up the bottom, stick your bushing, and uh, there you, you're good to go. Um, I just like hand tighten it a little bit first, and then I take a socket and just uh, tighten it even more. Not too much force, you wanna just kind of have it, you want them to be solid, but you don't wanna do too much force. Again, I don't like using a power tool. I like to use the hand tools. And uh, I think it's just safer, you know. You can't fix uh, something if you drill too hard or screw into it too hard. And I've made enough of those mistakes, I know not to do that. So here we go, they're all attached. Moving on now to the fair rules. And uh, basically these are little cylinders, metal cylinders that stick into the back of the body and your strings go through them and they hold your strings in place. So they're not putting uh, any pull on the wood and the, uh, the finish, so it's pretty easy to put in. Sometimes they're easier than other times. The nice thing with uh, getting the official fender body is I know that the holes are drilled properly, so um, in this case, these ones didn't just pop in. You're pushing down a little bit of force, and uh, here's a close-up here. So there are six of them. Get your hands out of the way. Just kind of putting them in at first here, and then I had to put a little bit more force after that and just to be safe I recommend taking a cloth and trying to push over top so you're not pushing onto the body at all you're not gonna dent the paint or the body in any way and then um, these ones actually took a little bit more force than I expected so I took the end of uh, I'm taking a look here and seeing why I took the end of a screwdriver and uh, like the rubber end and uh, put some extra force you'll see that in a second here and maybe you can get them in with your hands. I got wimpy hands, I'll be honest. So here we go, just kind of lining it up, doing one at a time, taking a screwdriver, pushing down. And that got them in, they're in okay. And uh, it's the kind of thing, I was gonna reuse some from an older body. They're not easy to get out. If you're gonna try to pull these out, you're gonna ruin the body, or at least make, make a mess trying to get them out. So they're kind of, they're going in and they're staying in. And uh, that's the whole point, right? You don't want these things to come out, so. Got two done there, going on to the third one. Come on, use some force. Come on, do it. I was just thinking about the commentaries that I'm doing here for these videos. Kind of reminds me of uh, old commentary. Look at that, they're not even in straight. Come on, do a better job. Uh, kind of reminds me of commentaries from old DVDs. I don't know if they do them on Blu-ray anymore. I don't know if people watch them. Um, I never, I, I watched a couple back in the day and I'm totally getting off topic. So here we go. Look at that, I'm not even using the cloth because the cloth was getting in the way. And then we're done, that's it, they're in. And uh, that was a bit more work than I expected. You can see I'm really pushing hard. And just wanna make sure they're in perfect. Because uh, if they're not in perfect, then, th then I have to get them in perfect. Terrible script, who wrote this stuff? Here we go, side angle, look at that. That's a cool picture, it's got like a mirror image. So they're in, they're in all the way. They're in perfectly. Let's move on. This is uh, something I didn't have to do in the last build because the strap buttons were already in. And these are original strap buttons. 
They didn't come with something that I recommend, these little felt pads. You can make these yourself out of material. Please put felt pads between the body and the strap button. If you don't, you're gonna ruin the body. So, like I said, you can use, uh, you can make them yourself. I think these were extra ones that I had from before. So, this is really easy, it's just two screws. Uh, again, I'm waxing my nuts. I, uh, I'm not waxing my screws. Don't know why I said that. And if you're listening at this part, I don't know why you're even listening at this part. You probably skipped ahead. Nobody's listening to this. Okay, I uh, did the first one. Doing the second one here. Again, paraffin wax. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's uh, it's the wax you can use for uh, canning like fruit and stuff. Uh, you can find it at the grocery store or the supermarket if you know if you don't know what a grocery store is. Um, so there we go. Look at that super fast speed. I'm amazing. Tight. Make sure you got a tight grip here. Uh, now we're moving on. We're doing something called shielding, and I'm using copper tape. And this is the most tedious and time consuming part of this whole build. And why am I doing it? Um, basically you're building something called a Faraday cage and you're trying to prevent electromagnetic interference, which is very common with single coil pickups. They will pick up a lot of noise. This helps a lot. So uh, I actually recommend using the paint. You can buy electro, um, you can buy shielding paint. Um, in my case, it was out of stock. I couldn't find it. And it comes in tiny little bottles, so I would have had to buy a few of them. But if you have, I already had this copper tape, so I'm doing it. I've done it many times. It's, it's really time consuming because you have to cut the pieces to fit in. You can actually cut your fingers with this stuff too. It is metal. And uh, so I'm going to be lining all these cavities here. You can see you got one, two, three, four. Uh, not that little hole. I'm not doing that. And my advice is to, uh, you know, just take a piece, cut the shape you need kind of push along the edges so you get the shape uh, imprinted in the back and then cut it and stick it in. So here I'm just trying to cut a nice oval, get in the control cavity and I did a pretty good job there. And uh, the other tricky part with it is when you're peeling, when you're pulling the back off, it, it tends to roll up and then get stuck on everything. So you're, ah, it's just a pain. It's just, you know, honestly, it's a pain. If you can hire somebody to do that for you, do that. Uh, one thing I'll notice, I'll note too, is the uh, you can see the serial number sticker. It's kind of just sitting on the uh, the neck there. It's usually under the bridge pickup, and uh, I just took it out because I'm going to stick it over top of the paint, uh, over top of the shielding, sorry, tape. And uh, I don't want to forget what it is. I want to see it if I ever want to look at it. And uh, a good tip here also: take a pencil with an eraser on the end, and just kind of rub along all the edges and it pushes it down and you get a nice firm seal with uh, the tape and the wood. So you can hear, see here, I'm trying to get it through the edge. And right there, that's what I'm talking about, it gets stuck. And then it gets stuck on your fingers and then you're ripping it and it's falling apart. And you can tell I love it, right? I really love this part. It's my favorite part of the video. I don't know why I'm even watching this. Hey, it's better than, uh, better than squeaky plastic. I, I don't know why I said that. Here we go, turbo time. I just wanted to show you how to do a little bit and let's get going here. Um, I can already tell you, the uh, you don't have much room for mistakes. So like this, the edge of the control cavity, you can see the tape hanging over the edge a little bit there. I actually had to push it back after because uh, unless you don't mind it sticking out, I'm, I'm pretty uh, perfectionist for this stuff. Uh, here we go, up the bridge. And this took, I'd say real time, this took a good hour and a half, maybe an hour, I can't remember exactly, but it was, not fun but the rest of building a guitar is amazing this is just not the fun part the one not fun part i can't wait till we're done this and we're done there we go thumbs up from me for myself okay this is something uh, kind of new for me I'm, I'm using a, a three saddle bridge here and this is a, a vintage style and um i've done one before and it had compensated saddles and i originally wanted to get a compensated saddle bridge they sell one that's made for an American style body, which won't fit. It doesn't have the same holes routed out. So I bought this one and you can buy compensated saddles separately. So I'm swapping them out. Basically uh, the compensated saddles are like a staggered design to help with intonation. So you'll see that after. Um, you can look that up as well. There's a lot of information about, some people will say, you know, well the old school, the vintage way is the way I have them right there. They're just straight across. But 
it supposedly will make it a lot tougher to uh, tune and intonate. So it's just a quick uh, job here. I was just checking here, just checking to make sure that the screws are the same and they're identical. So they, they both fit. They just have different ends. You see one here has got a Phillips, one's got a flathead and uh, they both fit in fine. So uh, you can see there's a little tray of cardboard inside the bridge and that's just to uh, stop the scratching. When you slide, when you uh, raise and, or lower and raise the uh, saddles, the, the screws on the back tend to scratch on there. So, and it does rust. I've seen that on other, other bridges before. I have a Wilkinson and they will scratch and rust it. So there we go. Just taking the third one, popping it in. Thank God for, for fast motion and speeding up videos because uh, man, this video would be like 20 hours long. There we go. It's in, you can see they're staggered. All right, so now we're gonna take the bridge. And we're gonna take the bridge pickup, just showing the back here, the routing. Comes with the screws, you got four screws. These are V-Mod pickups. These are what you would find today if you bought a Telecaster Professional. These are the stock pickups on the Tele Pro line. And uh, so I'm gonna start with the bridge. All the hardware is included, really nice. These are really nice pickups. All the Fender pickups I've had, they've all been great. The packaging is really nice. They come with a really nice diagram. You'll see it in a second here. And uh, so I'm just putting away the neck pickup for now. And we will do the neck pickup a little bit later, saving it in the little packaging here, which is pretty cool. Now, you see here the pickup. This is a bridge pickup. It's got the two wires coming out, the red and the black. The black is the ground, the red is the hot, and the back plate is a, a metal plate so i'm going to take all the hardware out there's three screws for the bridge and these little rubber i call them rubber springs because basically that's what they're doing they're, they uh, provide some tension and allow you to raise and lower the uh, the pickup so just pops in the back and then you take your uh, your screws and the springs and you just stick them in and it's that simple there's not really much to it um, so yeah, you can see here you put your screw in, squeeze on the little rubber spring. There's gotta be a better name for that. I'm probably saying the wrong name, but let me know in the comments. What are those things called? And uh, they just kind of squish in. They don't really slide on super easy because they get stuck on the ridges, but you just gotta kind of push it in there and uh, it's not too bad. So doing all three here. And then once those are on, you just put the bridge pick up back through the hole and it just slides right through the, the hole is big it shouldn't be tight and um, there's a lot of space so there you go you see here and you just kind of grab onto the little pieces on the back and uh, that's it and then the nice thing is that it lets you it lets you raise and lower the height of the pickup and that's a personal taste um, when you when you finally get the guitar set up you can raise and lower it and just see how it sounds to you. If you like the sound that you get, if you want more sound or less sound, and uh, there's no right or wrong. Um, I mean, you can make it sound like garbage, but that's not wrong if you like garbage. Uh, so anyways, here we go. Uh, I've got the four screws and we're gonna stick the bridge to the body now. And um, yeah, again, I'm waxing my nuts, screws. I said that on purpose, just being stupid. Okay, so you gotta take the, uh, the wires and uh, one little tip is just twist them together and you got to route them, stick them through the little routed gap and I'm hiding it. I can't even see it. Great camera angle here, guy. Who's your producer? Who made this video? I did. Okay, so there you go. Pulling it through. Make sure you got it going the right way. Um, you can see I've got the cloth sitting on it. Do that for, for when you're working on the body just because chances are you might drop something and then you ding the body and you're like, come on. Oh, there you go. I'm pushing the tape back a little bit from the edge because it was hanging out the side. So four screws and that's it. The whole thing gets attached. And here's a question for everybody. You can leave me a comment about this. You'll notice I don't have a ground wire going to the, uh, the bridge into the body. And people always ask me about that. As far as I know, these, these bridge pickups that have the metallic backing like that, they get grounded with the bridge, which grounds itself to the body. Tell me if that sounds right. Um, as far as I know, it works. I don't have any grounding issues. There we go, it's attached. Okay, here we go. This is uh, the pick guard, 
and you can see I've already gone crazy with the, uh, the copper tape on the back. I don't think you actually need all of that copper tape. This was uh, something that I'd, I'd done previous to making the video here. Um, I don't think it hurts because you can actually buy full sheets that fit on the whole back. So, so the idea is that part will cover over the uh, the cavities and create the Faraday cage that I was talking about. So, pulling out the neck pickup. Here's the uh, the wiring diagram I'm talking about. Um, it's kind of hard to see there, but. They, they had for a second, they were showing they had two body grounds. I'm doing one and I'm not doing a second, but I'll already tell you because I'm doing this after I've already put it together. I have no grounding issues. So when do you ground a bridge pickup into the body? Tell me in the comments, I really wanna know. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna mention a mistake I'm making here. It's not a big mistake, it's just something stupid. I was trying not to scratch the pickup the, mat, the metal on the front can scratch easily, so I kept the plastic on, and I recommend taking it off because getting it off after was not easy. I'm trying to get that, I don't know if you can see there, it's hard to see the plastic, there's a thin layer of plastic film, like a clear film. Because the, the uh, pickup is, is now tight in with the, uh, the pick guard, it's hard to get that piece of plastic off. I did get it, but it was just not easy. So take it off before you start this, it won't hurt. Uh, it's the same idea with the uh, the bridge. You got these screws, you got these rubber springs, and uh, you can actually use springs too. There are springs, but these these rubber these rubber springs are awesome. Here, here's a perfect angle. You can see exactly what they're doing. As you tighten it, the pickup goes up higher, like you're raising the height, and then you get more sound going into the strings. So, just doing a quick adjustment, and uh, the idea is you can do this later. Adjusted. Oh, I'm leaving, I guess. I got, I got bored. Oh, I'm back. I guess I wasn't bored. So, uh, yeah, just putting the, uh, the cloth on there to protect it. This one has, you can see it's got three wires. You got uh, a white, a black, and a yellow. So the white is the hot, and you've got a black ground, and you've got another ground. I believe the yellow ground is grounding the cover. Correct me if I'm wrong again. I'm not a pickup expert. Um, so twist your cables together. That makes it easier to get through these little routing spots here. I'm trying to get through the second one, you actually have to pull it through two. Um, something I'll mention uh, that I do prefer, I wish these bodies were routed for a humbucker in the neck. And you're gonna see why in a minute because I ran into, the one problem I ran into in this whole build is because of that. And because of the neck that I chose. So I've never had this problem before. Basically, I'll, I'll tell you before it happens. Um, so the neck is, you can see I'm having trouble there. The neck is 22 frets, which is one more than standard. So it's hanging down. You can see I'm having trouble. I don't have any wiggle space underneath the pick guard because the pickup is there and it's kind of pushing on the cavity. There's no room to get that in. So I fight for it a little bit here. I try raising the pickup, I try lowering it. Um, you can't stick the pickup on after the fact. You just, it's just, you're not gonna be able to get it on. So I do realize that after a good 20 minutes or so of playing around with it, probably not 20 minutes. It was probably more like a couple days. No, I'm just kidding. Probably more like two minutes. Um, I had to take the neck off. So just a quick little boop. And uh, basically I just had to get a little, little space. Watch this. Boom, that's it. Just took me a while to realize that. So if you have, so here's the tip. If you have a vintage style body that's routed for a single coil in the neck and you have a 22 fret neck, you're gonna need to put the pick guard in first, then attach your neck. Not a big deal, it's just a pain, you know? So that's my one mistake I made, or one thing that I learned on this video. And uh, it really puzzled me because uh, I looked back at the other builds I did and I didn't understand I had a 22 fret neck on the blue telly that I built. Then I remembered it was a player telly body and it has a, a neck humbucker. Uh, I've routed for a neck humbucker, sorry. And I'm getting off topic. Here's the obsidian wire kit and the control plate. And I was just showing the diagram that uh, shows the wiring for that. So we're gonna stick everything onto the telly control plate. See here, it's got two screws. It's got a front and a back. You will know which side is the front because it's got a nicer, cleaner 
shinier metal. Here's the uh, control knobs, volume knobs, sorry, vol uh, volume and, and tone. And uh, so I'm gonna put all that together. Um, yeah, like I was mentioning, here's uh, some extra parts that I had from before. That is uh, a jack ferrule. This is a control switch tip. Um, and I had that from before because I bought a two pack and I had one left over. Uh, you can see there's a grounding wire there too. As I was mentioning, you'll see the which side is nicer and which side kind of has a little bit of maybe a scratch or something on it. And then you can decide which one you want to use. If you want the ugly side on the top, go nuts. So we've got um, a couple uh, screws and washers and just hand tightening it with the, uh, the little wrench piece here. It's not called a wrench piece. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Hey, I'm not a, what? I'm losing my mind. It's like three in the morning here. Okay, so we're attaching uh, two screws. That's the four-way switch that will uh, control which pickup you're selecting. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. You got two screws going in there and that's it. It's connected. I really love these obsidian wire kits. Uh, now we're putting on the uh, control knobs, volume. So they have these little screws in them that you have to loosen or tighten, uh, depending if they're already tightened. I'm trying to get the angle there so you can see it there. Just getting it out of the way. And that's how they connect to the shaft. So put it on. You don't want to get the shaft. No, you do want to get the shaft. And then you tighten it. So you tighten the shaft. What is he saying? Nobody knows. That's why you're watching this. But you're not watching this part. You've already skipped ahead to the, the sound part. Uh, there we go. So we're tightening, tightening it. And we're good. Those are solid. Look how smooth those turn. Look at that. I can one finger slide it and can't always do that because some knobs don't turn as easily. So I'm just kind of uh, figuring out if it's gonna fit in there. I know it's gonna fit in there, but hey, you know, you never know. Adding that shielding uh, tape does take a little bit of space away. So I'm just trying to adjust it there. And you'll notice this body, maybe you didn't notice, but I'll mention it. It wasn't, um, there's no drill holes. There's no, there's no holes for the screws for the, uh, the pick guard or for the control plate. Um, that you got to do that yourself so I recommend taking some painters tape and here's the, the screws that are gonna be for the pickguard take some painters tape um, and attach it to the body showing the uh, the drill bit that I'm using I want it to just be a little bit smaller than the ridges so opening up the uh, the pack of pickguard screws uh, I'm gonna have to do eight of them and two holes on the control cavity uh, I'm just taking a little screwdriver here and I'm just kind of etching a little little notch into each one adding another piece of tape just to make it a little bit tighter so yeah each hole take a little uh, make a little notch so when you do drill in it's gonna grab it and you're not gonna slide I've had in my previous video on my blue telly video on the neck when I was doing a part of the neck I did have a slide and that was terrible so here we go we're gonna do super fast all eight of them look at that morphing technology it's amazing here we go and uh hey maybe you can recognize uh if you're from canada you recognize that that drill was a mastercraft from canadian tire there we go adding the uh the final screws uh, why am i loosening it what did i do wrong oh yeah you didn't wire anything you nimrod um so yeah all the uh, holes are drilled and now we're gonna actually wire it and uh hey don't you hate when uh when you're wiring Oh, sorry, I'll get back to that in a second when I, when I focus on what I'm talking about. This is the body ground. Look at that, morphing. Um, getting off topic. Man, you're really losing it today. So I'm kind of making a little hole in the side here. I'm gonna stick this uh, screw and body ground in the side. I'm gonna tell you why, because I did this on a white Telecaster they have. It's the same kind of body. And I drilled into the bottom of the cavity and there is not enough space in the bottom of the cavity for a screw to go. So I drilled through the body, right through the body. So I won't be doing that again. And that's why I'm drilling it in the side here, which looks kind of stupid, but there's enough room underneath the, uh, the controls. So it fits in fine. So you can see that here. And this is uh, the one ground to the body that I'm doing. Like I mentioned, I don't do the other one to the bridge. And uh, you can let me know in the comments if you think that's wrong. 
or if you think that's right. So uh, here we go. We're putting the uh, the output jack. I used to call it the input jack. It's input output whatever. They've already got the uh, the little bracket holding it there. So if you didn't have that in there, I'd be using an electro socket jack, which is something totally different for another day. Um, so basically, you just uh, there's a washer and a screw, and you're just tightening it there, and uh, give it a good hand tighten. You want it to uh, tighten a little bit until it starts spinning. The wires start spinning on the back. So, hey, don't you hate when you forget to uh, press record on all the wiring that you're doing? Well, I just did that. So, anyways, it's not that important. Here's the uh, the diagram. Yeah. So I didn't record all the attachments, but here is how you do it. You just press down on this little tab, put the wire in, and that's it. And you do that like eight times. Now we're testing the uh, the connections. I always recommend doing that before you reattach the pick guard and the control plate. And I just take a little amp and then I tap it, tap some metal onto uh, each pickup in each position and uh, make sure you got the right um, the right settings because you can you can easily reverse the, the pick guard uh, wiring and you know anyways worked out here so we're connecting it and we're almost done just taking off the tape we're almost done um, you can't play it without strings though so these are the strings that I like right now these are NYXLs from Diodario and these are uh, a hybrid set so they're 9 to 46 so I won't bore you with um, with uh, setting up strings on a guitar but I'll just fast forward through that look how fast I go um, all right, this part. Now, this is probably the most stressful part of this whole build. It's attaching the, uh, the string guide. Um, and it pretty much has to be perfect. You gotta line it up with your strings. So put your strings on first, and then uh, you have to drill a hole. And in my previous video, my blue telly video, my uh, hole drilling experience wasn't great. I slipped, and uh, the drill bit scratched across the, uh, the headstock. It's okay, it ended up being okay though, so. I do recommend uh, putting some tape around it and marking it with, uh, you know, kind of doing like a little uh, pre-drill and then it should be okay. And you have to drill two holes. You gotta do for the main one and then there's a little notch where it has to sit. So the screw goes into one and then there's a notch so it doesn't spin back and forth. It's like holding it in place. And uh, yeah, it's okay. It worked out perfectly this time. I learned my mistake from last time. That was the mistake I was talking about. And uh, there we go. All right, let's get the weight of the guitar. 3.757 kilos, and we're looking at an 8.28 pound guitar. So it's got some weight to it. It's not crazy. Um, I actually don't mind it. That's pretty good, 8.2. Now we're doing the uh, resistance of the pickups. And you can see the measurements here. I always just show this because people have asked me before about them. So these are the V-Mod pickups, right? And you can see the, uh, the bridge and neck in uh, series was really high. Um, and there we go. All right, all that's left to do is the setup, and you can see the four steps there. And uh, I'm just taking a straight edge, and I'm just checking the uh, the uh, relief on the neck, just eyeballing it to see if it's got uh, too much relief or not. Um, what I'm actually going to do is take a feeler gauge. Uh, first, I'm putting a capo on the first fret. If you're wondering how I learned all this stuff, I've just watched other videos and I've read books and I've seen other people how they do it. So let me know if this is how you do it, if you agree with this way or not. Like I mentioned, I'm not a luthier, so hey, I'm all about learning. So here we go. Here's the measurement I'm taking is 0 0.010. And uh, basically uh, feeling, this is for the, the relief of the neck. Um, holding down on the fret where the body meets the neck and then I'm sticking it under the seventh fret and uh, if it pushes up on the string, I know I need some more uh, relief if I want, or if it's a, a big gap, then I know I need to tighten it. So it's, so you can see here the, uh, the truss rod, my hand is blocking it, but I've got the, uh, the Allen key in there. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, what? Who says that? Um, anyway, so I was happy with it. It's, uh, it's set the way I like it, it's pretty straight. So now we're moving on to the, uh, the bridge action height and I'm doing a 1.60 that's a fender spec like that's an official fender setup spec so I'm taking the measurement at the 17th fret it's kind of hidden there on the right but uh, I'm taking a look at the uh, the height of the string from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret and then 
the, the bridge saddles, they have little screws and you just lift or lower as needed. So um, this is something I'm doing. I consider a setup like this. I'm just kind of getting going and then uh, I try out the guitar after and I adjust as needed. So this isn't the final setup. Um, same with the intonation and uh, let's see here. This is something though, the nut action height. This is where you're actually um, carving into the nut with with files. So here's the measurement I'm taking. Basically, I'm looking to get a 0 0.018 measurement underneath. I've got a lot to go. So uh, I've got a, a set of files here. These are Japanese steel. They're UO Chikyu nut files, six piece. And you can see they're uh, rated for a 10 to 46. And I'm doing a 9 to 46 hybrid, but it's close enough, so it won't really matter that much. Uh, I just like to put a little piece of tape underneath here to protect in case I slip. I don't want to cut into the headstock and ruin it. So what you do here is you loosen each string. Well, you do one at a time, starting with the uh, 0.046. And uh, basically you're, you're carving it or slotting it, sawing it, I guess is the right term in the direction of the string so like a downward angle with a straight with a straight cut you can see here i've got a little bit more to go so it's uh you know it's a long process this takes a little while you want to make sure you don't go too far because it's uh something you can't reverse and um, so take your time i'm going through all six here very quickly uh, and i can't remember exactly how long this took me probably a good uh, half hour or more and uh, I ended up going back after and adjusting a couple more. They weren't they weren't low enough, and uh, I've added more. And uh, you know, it's it looks like a lot of work, and it's it's not too bad. It's not that bad once you've done it a few times. It's um, I, I think it can maybe seem overwhelming at first. You can see, I've got a little bit of space. It's not too bad. It, it's a good enough setup for now that I can get going and playing. All right, at this point, I'm doing intonation and tuning there's a lot of uh, information online and in books about intonation basically so i'm not going to show you exactly how i'm doing it right because it's kind of like a work in progress um, so for example you have your your low e string pluck it you get your e note you want it to sound the same at the 12th fret so the way you do that is raise and lower the saddles and uh, there's a screw on the back so it's something you got to play around with a little bit. Um, it's not too hard, but it does take a little bit of work, and it's time-consuming because you have to lower, uh, you have to uh, sort of relieve the tension on the string, and then adjust it, put it back, tune it, and uh, so yeah, I think I'm doing a couple. It was close enough um, from when I just set up initially that it was it was kind of good to go, and uh, I'll probably adjust it a little bit more as I need to. But that's basically it. Man, this was uh, just a long process. So, all right, let's have a look at it now in fine detail up close in the gallery.
still awake if you managed to make it through this whole video thanks for watching through the whole thing this was uh, a huge project and they're really fun for me to do I think I need a green one ah get that uh, somebody just nope shouldn't even shouldn't even do that these are really fun to do I hope you like that I hope it was useful um, and I hope you enjoyed it too I hope it sounded good it uh, it worked out really really well uh, every project I learned something new um, I've learned something new on this one yeah let me know what you think Give me your feedback below. Anything, any questions about any parts. Um, like I said, always look, for, if you're looking at doing this kind of thing, look for deals. Don't always uh, jump on the first offer or, or the first thing you see. Try to get deals, ask for deals, um, and then look for sales as well. So I'll leave this to you. Let me know if you think this is worth doing. You saw the price comparison to doing an American equivalent with the Fender Mod Shop. Um, is it just better to buy a guitar off the shelf or is this even worth doing? If you wanted to. I already have another project in the works so come back again soon for that one. As always play guitar and have fun and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. And uh, hope this was great. Um, hey, I don't even know what I'm saying.